bam, and just like that, now you have a list of tickers from the Polygon API that you can use for your bulk data analysis. Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Gitbags, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get a list of tickers from the Polygon API. This is going to be helpful if you're doing bulk data analysis. You can make sure that those tickers that you have are able to be read by the API. So here we go Google search Polygon API, and then here the website is polygon.io. You can click in here in this top right hand corner, you're going to see login or sign up. If you haven't, created an account it's free you can get started there so here we are at our main page let's go under docs here and then let's click rest api docs and then once we're in here let's go ahead and also open up the python client library right here here's the github but we want to go to the read the docs so here we have our python read the docs and then we also have our regular polygon documentation right here if you go back to the main page you can see your api key right down here but you can also click this dashboard here and then click api keys and then here under api keys you'll see your api key you're going to need that later so let's flip back over to our python docs here let's go to getting started and here the first thing we need to do is pip install polygon api client so go ahead and copy that out and you can go ahead and pip install it if you're using anaconda click under environments here click this play button in your base environment open a terminal go ahead paste the command in there and run that once that's finished running pop over to home and then go ahead and launch your spider so we're back to our python docs here this block of code is going to help us to create a client and then authenticate to connect it to the api so go ahead copy that out and then paste it into your script here Here's the script you can find all the scripts on the github the link will be in the description here basically we've just pasted what you saw at that block we have our import our modules and then we have our creating a client here with our api key now i'm importing my api key from a separate file called polygon api key.py there's a variable called polygon api key in that file so here's what it looks like it has the variable here and it's assigned as a string if you don't want to do all that you can just assign yours as a variable here and as a string so that when you create a client here you can use your API key now let's take a look at the first line of code we're gonna run it's under ags here and it's called get grouped daily ags now keep in mind this is not the best way to do this and we'll see that the amount of tickers that are returned in each data frame are different for every single day it's also worth noting that the get grouped daily ags is a non paginated endpoint so we're using this type of request Request here instead of with a for loop. So we're going to do client.get grouped daily ags and then we're going to specify a date. And what that's going to do is it's going to return a single candle for each stock that traded on that day that you specify. So here in the script we have client.get grouped daily ags and then we're specifying a date here. And then I'm just wrapping that in a data frame so everything's nice and neat. As you can see, here's our data frame. And if you just want the tickers, you can do market data.ticker and then that will give you a series of all tickers this next line of code here what it does is it gets the same data but it also includes over-the-counter stocks so we set that to true and we can see how many more stocks come back so as you can see it's over 4,000 more stocks that are included with the over-the-counter equals true now all this is doing is just taking the series and turning it to a list so now you have a ticker list now keep in mind this is not the best way to do this and I'll show you why here so as I mentioned earlier if a stock doesn't trade on a specific day no data will be returned when you make a request to get the candlestick data so as we'll see here I've made three requests from separate days and we'll see that the amount of tickers that are returned in each data frame are different for every single day so as you can see the amount of tickers that are returned on each day is different now that being said I'm gonna show the way that we should be getting tickers so if you go back to the Python docs and go under get started here we're going to make a request to a paginated endpoint. So we need to copy this block of code here. Now, as you can see, I've pasted it here. We're creating an empty list called tickers and then we're paging through the response, but we're using list tickers here. We're specifying a ticker and then we're just adding the object that gets returned to a list here. 
So if we go to the Python docs and we go to references here in the sidebar, and then we go to list tickers, we can see the different parameters that we can put in our list tickers function. So we're gonna be doing client.list tickers, and then we're just gonna go for a single ticker, which is Apple. So if you look at the response, it's a list and it has this ticker object inside it. So if we wanna inspect the first object of the list here, here it is. And then if we wanna take even deeper look, we can access the different attributes of this object, one of which is the ticker here, and we can see it is the ticker. At the same time, we also know that t.ticker, which was used in the for loop is going to also yield us the ticker. If you want to take a deeper look at what attributes and methods are available to this ticker object, then you can use dir tickers here, and that's going to give you all the different methods and attributes. And we're just using the dot ticker to pull the ticker out of that object. So now we've made a request to get one ticker. We want to get a lot of tickers. So what I'm going to do first here is create a counter. That's going to help us keep track of our for loop. Then I'm going to create an empty list called active tickers where we can store all of our tickers. Then we're gonna page through all the responses here. We're gonna use list ticker, but we're gonna set a couple of parameters. So back in the Python docs here, we can specify the market. Now, if we go to our documentation on Polygon, we can go down to tickers. So then once we click into tickers here, then we can see what markets are available. So we wanna do stocks. And then we also wanna make our limit the max of a thousand. So let's go ahead and run this. So as you can see, it returns back just under 12,000 different tickers. Tickers. So we're going to look at another request and what it's going to do is going to also get the inactive tickers. So all we're going to do is set our active parameter to false. So and as you can see here, it turns back over 24,000 different tickers. So if you look at the polygon docs, you can see that we can get all of the tickers that are on a specific exchange if we specify the exchange. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify for all US exchanges. Now to do that, we need to use the function get exchanges. So if you look back at the Python docs, you can click under get exchanges and take a look at the function here. We can specify an asset class. We're probably gonna specify stocks. So if you go back to the polygon docs, you click under exchanges, you can see that we can list an asset class of stocks and also a locale of US. This is gonna help return all the US exchanges. So if we come back to the script here, we are using client.getExchanges specifying asset class and the locale and then we're just putting that into a data frame so as you can see it returns a ton of data let's take a look at the columns so here we have all the columns this column MIC is the exchange ID that's used in the list tickers function so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean up the data that we got back so here, if we print the column MIC, we can see all the different codes and then there's a couple of none values. So what we'll do right here is we'll just remove the duplicates by turning it into a set and then back into a list and then we'll remove the none value. So here, if you type exchange list, you can see all the exchanges here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a for loop that loops through all of the exchanges and then gets all the tickers on each exchange. So we create an empty list here, which is US tickers. And then for each exchange in our exchange list, we're gonna page through all the responses. So we're gonna use client.list tickers here. We're gonna specify we want stocks on exchange X. Active is false and then our limit here. And then we're gonna add the tickers that we get to our US tickers list. And then every time we finish an exchange, we're just gonna print it out so we can kind of keep track of our for loop. So it gives us this huge list of US tickers, but there's probably some duplicates because some tickers trade on multiple exchanges. So if we use set, then we can see once we get rid of the duplicates, how many tickers there are. So all we're doing here in the last line is assigning a final ticker list here. It's gonna be equal to our US tickers, but with the duplicates removed. And this last method is how I would go about getting a ticker list for US exchange traded stocks. Bam, and just like that, now you have a list of tickers from the Polygon API that you can use for your bulk data analysis. This is just the first video in a series. We're gonna keep chopping it up. Yeah, my blessing fam, let's go get these bags.